In this video, we will compare the P-39 Aero Cobra with the Japanese A6M0 and the German Messerschmitt Bf 109. Before we start, if you are unfamiliar with the P-39 Aero Cobra, I would recommend watching my previous video. With that being said, let's jump right into the action. We will start by comparing the P-39D2 with the A6M2 Mod 21. The time frame is early 1942 and the setting is New Guinea. It's important to state that the following values were probably very different from the real ones in the field, since hot and wet tropical conditions degrade aircraft performance. We are assuming both aircraft were degraded in a similar fashion. When it comes to turning, it isn't surprising to see the Japanese aircraft come out on top. With a larger wing area and a lower weight, the wing loading value was much smaller. This meant that the Japanese aircraft could turn inside the Aero Cobra, with the exception of high-speed engagements. Still, the P-39 had a better roll rate, which gave it an advantage in the initial part of the turn. In the vertical plane, things were more balanced. The Zero was much lighter, but also had an engine with much less power. Still, with a better power to weight ratio and a lower drag, the Japanese fighter had a better climb performance. Based on pilot reports, we know that the Zero had an advantage in climb, and it seems to be confirmed by its specifications. This was counteracted in New Guinea by early warning provided by the Australians that allowed American pilots to climb to a higher altitude in order to greet the Japanese. The Aero Cobra was faster than the Zero, at least below 15,000 feet. American pilots stated that they could slowly pull away from engagements with the Zero, though the Japanese fighter had better acceleration. This speed advantage was of extreme importance, as things would have fared considerably worse for the Americans without it. The P-39 was better armed than the Japanese fighter. Its weapons were also much more effective against the Zero, due to its light armor and lack of self-sealing tanks. The Zero had a much larger combat range, and that was crucial in the Pacific theater. This gave it an important advantage. As to its resilience, as stated previously, the Japanese fighter was lacking, whereas the P-39 was a well-armored, sturdy aircraft. Due to this, Japanese pilots had a much higher attrition rate than their American opponents. Another contributing factor was that the Japanese pilots normally took the baffling decision of refusing to carry a parachute, as this was seen as a willingness to surrender in the event of bailing out in enemy territory. When it comes to handling, it's a harder characteristic to gauge. The P-39 needed weaker control inputs, especially at higher speeds, while the Zero, at least until this variant, had controllability issues at high speeds. But we can't really ignore the fact that the P-39 was prone to spinning, especially after spending its ammo, and was in general considered a demanding fighter. So I am of the opinion that the Zero had an advantage here. I would say that, overall, the Zero gave a small advantage to the Japanese pilots, but nothing that a good Aero Cobra pilot couldn't reverse, especially at lower altitudes and higher speeds. Let's hear some opinions from those who were there. Charles King The Bell P-39 was not the type of aircraft to do battle with the Japanese fighters that we initially encountered in the Pacific. The aeroplanes used by either side had both operational advantages and disadvantages. This resulted in a kill ratio that was realistically 1 to 1. Because our fighters at this time were not good enough to give us a distinct advantage over our foes, many of us, myself included, badmouthed the P-39. Saburo Sakai The willingness of the Allied pilots to engage us in combat deserves special mention here, for, regardless of the odds, their fighters were always screaming in to attack. And it is important to point out that their fighter planes were clearly inferior in performance to our own Zeros. We will now move on to a very different theater, the Eastern Front. Here we will put head to head the BF 109 F4 against the Aero Cobra Mark I, the first version of the P 39 sent to the Soviet Union. The time frame is May 1942, when the Aero Cobra was pressed into service. The choice of these variants was based on realism. The Germans had recently introduced the G version of the BF-109, but the reality was that the Aero Cobra entered service far from the main action, where there were few, if any, BF-109s of the latest version. 
Another important forward is that the comparison is only made at low level, as this was the reality on the Eastern Front. If we looked at the full spectrum of altitudes, the BF-109 was clearly the superior machine. The specifications used for the Cobra Mark I are the ones found during Soviet testing of the aircraft. As such, we have access to the specifications of the Lightning Era Cobra with the 4.30 machine guns removed, among other smaller changes. The P-39 was heavier than the BF-109, but also had a larger wing surface. If we look at the wing loading, we can see that the standard Era Cobra Mark I had a similar value to the BF-109 F-4, probably giving similar turn rates. We can also see that the Lightning version had a lower wing loading. This seems to confirm what numerous Soviet pilots said about the Era Cobra being able to outturn the BF-109. In the vertical plane, the BF-109 had a considerable advantage, having both a more powerful engine and a lower weight. The Lightning version made things slightly better for the Era Cobra, but its power-to-weight ratio was still considerably inferior. This can be confirmed by the time both planes took to reach 15,000 feet. At low level, below the Era Cobra's critical altitude of about 14,000 feet, the speed was quite similar for both aircraft. Above that mark, the P-39's performance quickly waned, and the BF-109 became considerably faster than the American aircraft. But as we are focusing on the low-level engagements of the Eastern Front, I would say that the speed was comparable and within the range of uncertainty. In armament, the Era Cobra had an advantage over the BF-109, even the Lightning version without the 430 cal machine guns. The main difference would be the American aircraft's two heavy machine guns versus the Germans' two rifle caliber ones. Later variants of the P-39 also introduced the famous 37mm cannon. Still, it must be noted that the Germans had more than twice the number of 20mm cannon rounds at their disposal. When it came to range, the American aircraft had an advantage. In resilience, things were more comparable, but I would still give an advantage to the American plane here. Both aircraft had bulletproof glass and armor plates protecting the pilot and the engine, but the American aircraft had a larger total amount. In handling, the advantage would probably be on the German side, for the same reasons stated during the comparison against the Zero. Overall, I would give a small victory to the BF-109 here, thanks to its superior vertical ability. This opinion only considers the low altitude engagements. Still, it was much closer than one would expect, judging by the P-39's bad fame. But let's hear some opinions from the ones that were really there. Gunther Hall. Then, by way of foreign aid, particularly in the south around the Caucasus where I was fighting, they brought in Spitfires and the Bell P-39 Era Cobra, which I liked and the Russians liked, but which was inferior to the BF-109. Helmut Lipfert The Era Cobra was the best Russian fighter at the time, a close match for our BF-109s. Nikolai Golodnikov The Cobra, especially the Q5, was quite a match for all German fighters, and was even superior to them. It's important to note that the P-39 did have considerable power plant upgrades during its lifespan. If we were to compare later versions like the L or the Q, the results would be much better for the American fighter. But the comparison would have to be made against the BF-109's G variant, possibly offsetting this. As we saw, pilots had very different opinions about these engagements, so please let me know yours in the comments below. Now I will enjoy a small break to focus on my family. I will return in 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.